The nine drawing supplies I talk about today all have something in common. They each have a little trick, a little quirk, and overall are pretty cool. As I got more serious about drawing and gradually upgraded my tools and materials, I discovered that some of these were not that straightforward to use. It was only after using them for a while or even doing some research that I realized there was a theme. The first one is my two millimeter lead holder. The name itself is quirky. Depending on which website you land if shopping online, it's sometimes labeled as a mechanical clutch pencil or pen holder with lead. Technically, this is a mechanical pencil. Let's just call ours a lead holder. The thick two millimeter lead is protected within the clutch mechanism. It's less prone to break under pressure than a standard 0.5. The anti-slip grip provides a comfortable hold and adds weight to the front of the holder for added stability, which comes in handy for precise mechanical drawings such as executing straight lines. This metal clip at the top, it indicates the lead hardness. This is useful when you have only one pen holder and tend to switch the lead for different projects. The lead is available in seven levels of hardness as well in multiple colors. Therefore, I prefer to have at least two holders rather than switching leads by and forth. For example, I do my contour drawings with an H lead and my rough sketching with an HB, so I prefer the convenience of separate holders. Another cool thing is that the leads are universal, which means they fit in most other brands of 2mm lead holders and vice versa. The lead comes out by intuitively pressing the push button. Did you know that this push button is also an integrated sharpener? There's that. Now it turns out that if you happen to lose that push button, there is an emergency replacement included in a case of 12. That's what this orange cylinder knob thing is. The replacement push button comes with this case of refills sold separately from the tools that it's designed for. The case is tricky to open. The top slider has an arrow that you press down, so naturally you want to press on the bottom arrow to open that slider. It turns out the release tab is on the bottom of the case, therefore applying pressure from the bottom slides it open. Not where the arrow is. There's that. Let's look at our third item, which I think is underrated. The actual sharpener for these lead holders. If you, like me, value an extra sharp point, then you'll appreciate these handy measurement stoppers. Two options of precise sharpening cones. A dust wiper, which solves the problem of potentially getting lead residue on your drawing surface. Or alternately, with a few wiper replacements that you can simply flip over. They tend to last a long time. The lid is secure and with a twist and pull easy to empty out. It has a nice weight to it which I think is important for counterbalancing the load from the metal lead holder. And then there's this. Compared to a standard pencil sharpener, it really stands out design-wise. Not just great looking, it has high quality steel blades. I've been using it frequently for over two years and it still delivers on the promise of a consistently even sharp point. It's intended for color pencils and it works great with graphite too. The shape presents a nice grip when operating it and it's translucent so there's a quick visual of when it's ready to be emptied. It doesn't instinctively twist or pop off, that little divot in the front where you unlatch the cover doubles as a pressure point for releasing the top. It's a childproof cap. Erasers. I use two kinds. I use these sliding retractable stick holders. Here's the spot to press and hold the eraser in place for accurately rubbing off tiny details. We can visually see how much erasers left. These stick refills, they come in singles or boxes. If you're a high mileage user, purchasing in bulk is worthwhile. However, these sticks, they tend to dry out over time, so I store mine away from sunlight inside an airtight bag. Then there's kneadable or kneaded erasers. They function just like a traditional rubbing eraser, plus you can shape it for dabbing the paper to lighten up areas of graphite, though I mostly roll it over my drawings to remove loose particles. It keeps my drawing surface clean and ready for the ink application. It proved to be a mistake to purchase these in bulk quantities. A single eraser lasts nearly indefinitely. The trick is to 
regularly pull it apart and fold it onto itself like dough and this sustains its efficacy. Speaking of ink application, I use bristle smooth paper for final artwork. From the pad, it's best to remove the sheets from the back of the package. Sometimes the adhesive is quite tenacious and can damage the sheets if removed from the front. I've encountered surprises with the odd pen holder. So let's have a quick look at these now. In my video, what I wish I knew about dip pens, I mentioned that if you were to purchase only one holder, to select one with the highest compatibility. For example, I have the Tashikawa pen holder that I enjoy for the comfortable rubber grip and it works with most nibs, except with the popular Hunt 102 Crow Quill nib. The stock holder for the Crow Quill looks like this. As a solution, many artists wrap sports tape, duct tape, or cork or other materials on the holder to improve the hold. Um, Maru nib Japanese pen holders like Zebra or Nico brands are compatible with the 102 Crow Quill. But just for fun, I asked Speedball directly if they would consider creating a classic straight holder for the Crow Quill. This was the response. So that's awesome. I'm thrilled to announce Speedball has asked me to join their professional artist network. This means that I can now contribute input to help further develop tools and materials specific for Illustrator. But more on this later. These Western manuscript style straight pen holders are said to be compatible with a wide range of nib sizes and types because of the universal mount. You see the four prongs inside compared to this classic holder. Even though these are Western holders and and I'm inserting Western nibs, it's a snug fit. Some, some resist completely. When that's the case, I gently gradually wiggle the ring outwards, uh, not completely, then insert the nib and press both back into the shaft. Be warned, I highly recommend using your fingers or a cloth for this maneuver. If you have concerns about damaging the holder, then please don't attempt this trick. Like in this instance, if there's resistance from dried ink sealing the ring, best not use force or sharp tool. I hope that you found this tricks and quirks video helpful. If you'd like to see more on the topic of drying supplies, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be happy to read your suggestions in the comments either for supplies to review or if you have product recommendations about illustration specific stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.